Welcome back my friends, today as promised I am bringing you that full detailed comparison between Samsung's Galaxy A14 and their Galaxy A04s. These affordable budget phones share a lot of the same headline features such as a 5000mAh battery, 50 megapixel main cameras, they both have 90Hz displays as well as micro SD card slots for expandable storage. Their price gap varies depending on where you live. We'll find out what the differences are in every important aspect. I have included a camera comparison, speed test, and a specification breakdown so you'll know which one is better suited for you. First thing is a physical overview of these devices. The Galaxy A14 is to my left in the black color variant and it is slightly taller and wider. This allows it to have a display that is 0.1 inch larger at 6.6 .6 inches. It's not a display size difference that you can tell just when looking at them. Both have a headphone jack at the bottom, they charge through USB-C, and they have a fingerprint reader on the right side that work at the same speed and accuracy. The power buttons feel the same when pressed. The A04s volume keys are more audibly tactile, so when both phones are in cases, I prefer this phone's volume keys for this reason. These are plastic built devices. The A14 striped finish will look more premium to the majority of people, and some will say the curved edges on the A04s will feel better to hold. Personally, I would go for the A14 in terms of physical design appeal. Besides having the same side mounted fingerprint readers, they also have face registered unlock, which works at exactly the same speed and accuracy. Let me show you what comes in the box with either device. My A04s shipped with a USB C to A cable a SIM tool, the standard instruction paperwork, as well as a wall adapter. This box is what I'm used to seeing for many years with the Galaxy A series phones. My A14 did not ship with a wall adapter, but instead a USB-C to C cable, as well as the SIM tool and the paperwork. This is sadly standard with the slimmer profile Samsung phone boxes, and I'm not a fan of the wall adapter omission, so the A04s is a winner for me in terms of packaging. I've heard from some of you in the comments that the A14 does come with a wall adapter in some regions, such as Brazil, so I can tell you as far as North America goes, we have drawn the short end of the stick. It is worth checking the product listing details for your local store or your online store. Both phones charge at 15 watt speed and they take the same amount of time to charge up fully from 0 to 100%. That's around 2 hours and 20 minutes for a full charge. Since both devices run at adaptive 90 hertz, my job to test these phones battery life is simple. I went ahead and made all the rest of the settings the same and started my drain test from 100% battery. Throughout this day I did the exact same operations on either device and gave them a fair chance to win the battery test. The A14 is a 5G enabled device. Now it's important to mention this because the A04s is not, and if we use 5G on this phone, it will surely drain the battery faster than using 4G on this one. For this reason I did not install a SIM card in either phone and will be testing the power efficiency of the processors in a fair manner. The Galaxy A04s won this battery drain test, it is left with more battery charge remaining and it was used for a longer period of time. As you saw in my review of the A04s, this phone's processor is well established to have great battery optimization. I expected it to win, it is pushing less pixels after all. Here's the display specification breakdown. Samsung's A14 is using a 400 pixel per inch panel. It is 2,408 pixels by 1080. The A04s is 270 pixels per inch. That is 1,600 pixels by 720. There is a big visible difference in terms of the sharpness. Now, the A04s is noticeably budget. Both panels are 20 by 9 aspect ratio LCD displays, not AMOLED, although the A14 does display deep black shades that have resemblance to AMOLED. The viewing angles are better on the A14, and this is another aspect in which the A14 is quite comparable to a mid-range device. Watching movies and videos is more pleasant in every aspect on the A14. The only equal ground between their displays is the refresh rate of 90Hz. If the price difference between these two phones is vast in your region, I can still see the A04s being a good purchase because at that lower budget tier, it's rare to find a high refresh rate display. I mean, even the iPhone 14, the non-pro model, doesn't have it, and that's four times the price in my country. It is time for the camera comparison. I've carried around both phones together for a while now, so I've got some good insight on their strengths and weaknesses. Before we get into the results, I wanted to say I really appreciate your support on my S23 and A14 review videos. I read every comment and it always makes me happy to read your kind words. When I put the photos from the A14 and the A04s side by side, I was very surprised by how similar they are. Color saturation is one thing, but image sharpness, depth of field, and the focal length are identical. 
The saturation was stronger on the A14, and that's because it processes images slightly differently. They both have a 50 megapixel main camera, and after seeing these images, I believe they're using the exact same three cameras. The other two lenses are a macro camera and a depth sensing lens for focusing and portrait blur. About that difference in image processing, I noticed more often that the A04S would add contrast, which actually made some favorable results for it. The A04S does not have night mode, but the low light shots were equally impressive, if not, sometimes better than the A14, which does have a dedicated night mode. One thing I am certain of now is the fact that these macro lenses are just here to make these phones more marketable. The more cameras they put onto a phone, the more sophisticated it will look. I took the car photos at the Canadian International Auto Show, just in case you were curious. There, I also recorded some video samples for you to see the difference between A14 with video stabilization and the A04S which does not include that feature. It is software stabilization, by the way. This feature is helpful in getting a steady shot, and it works, but the results are videos that are cropped in and have less detail. The A04S struggles to maintain focus often, and it's very shaky. For the price range, I'm not too disappointed by either device, but if the need to record video does come up, I hope to have a tripod around. As for the front cameras, the A04S has a 5 megapixel selfie camera, whereas the A14's is 13 megapixels. The difference is clear. The A14 provides more detailed selfies, it looks better overall. The A14 can record 1080p video from the front camera, and the A04S has a 720p limit. The rear cameras both record 1080p, but the front camera difference is large enough to give the win to the A14 for the cameras. Time for the speed and performance. I'm going to start with some basic tests, and then we're going to get further into day-to-day -day use, as well as gaming. I cleared all background tasks on both phones before starting my tests. The boot up time was drastically different between these devices. The A14 was done initializing startup after 34 seconds, and the A04S finished long after. It took a total of 58 seconds. The A14 is using the same chip that is found in the A13 5G. This is MediaTek's 7 nanometer Dimensity 700. It's an octa-core processor, and it uses the Mali G57 chip for graphics. On the A04S, we have Samsung's own 8 nanometer Exynos 850 processor. It's also octa-core, and it uses Mali G52 for graphics. In the Geekbench 5 benchmark test, the A14 pulled ahead with significantly better single-core performance, and the multi-core score is a lot better as well. In Geekbench machine learning, the A14 also gets a far better result. Keep in mind, these are both running Android 13 and the same version of One UI, version 5.0. I'm expecting the A14 to have software support for a longer period of time. Getting into these speed tests, I performed a few side-by-side -side Google Chrome web page load-up comparisons, connected to the same Wi-Fi network, of course. The A14 is faster almost every time, by a second or two, when there are no background tasks open. This speed difference gets more exaggerated when we have several tasks running in the background. The A04S just falls apart by contrast. The speed difference is truly drastic in some cases. Take loading apps, for instance. Twitter took a few extra seconds to display the For You page. Instagram loads up almost a full two seconds faster on the A14. That's again a big difference considering that there are no background tasks open when I did this test. I went ahead and tried some more basic apps such as YouTube and YouTube Music. Loading up games was also faster on the A14. One important thing to mention is that my Galaxy A14 has 4GB of RAM, whereas the A04S has 3 gigs of RAM. Now, the A04S is available in a 4GB RAM variant, but in many countries, the price difference between that model and the A14 is insignificant. At that point, most people will opt for the A14. I can't cover the price differences in every region of the world, but it is my job to tell you if you can afford the extra gig of RAM on the A04S for 4 gigs, and it's not a drastic price difference, it is worth doing so. If not, the A04S can benefit from keeping the device care widget on your home screen, so you can remember to manually optimize memory usage. I did not encounter the same memory problems on the A14. Let's get on to the gaming performance. This is an area where I'm especially pleased by the A14. The Samsung Galaxy A04S limits us to low graphics settings in most power demanding games, such as Call of Duty Mobile. PUBG actually plays on the high definition settings at high frame rate option, but the frame rates are not high, believe me. The medium frame rate option in the settings is more practical, and if you want the best competitive experience, you will have to switch down the graphics to balanced. You won't be able to play graphically demanding games at a high frame rate on the A04S, although my favorite game titles are playable at low or moderate settings. 
The Galaxy A14 shines in every game I've tested. It runs at 90Hz comfortably as you see with the show frame rate option enabled, but the actual frame rate is less than 90. It's still running high enough frame rates to set this apart from other budget phones. This is capable of handling most games in high graphics mode. PUBG and Call of Duty Mobile run smoothly, as well as World of Tanks, Minecraft, and Asphalt 9. If you're a mobile gamer, this is definitely the winner for you. I do not experience lag or stutter on the A14, certainly no app crashing so far in my month of use either. In the four months I've had the A04S, I've only recently started to experience some instances of lag and stutter. There has not been app crashing on the A04S, thankfully. I noticed the lag started to occur after the update to Android 13, interestingly. The A14 has NFC for tap to pay, and the A04S does not have that feature. What the A14 is missing is dual SIM and FM radio. On the A04S, when we connect headphones, it works just like a radio antenna. I remember using this feature a lot back in the day on my old HTC phones. Call quality is ever so slightly better on the A14. The data reception and data speeds are of course better on the A14 as well. It is 5G enabled. The speakers are the last hardware aspect we will touch on. The Galaxy A14 speakers are noticeably better in terms of clearer trebles and more present bass. Both are far from being great speakers, but they deliver loud music through a single speaker. For gaming, the speakers are alright, but for movies, I will always plug in my headphones. Simply put, the A14 provides better value in my opinion. If you're already an A04S owner, the silver lining is that your device is capable of better screen on time. I prefer the A14 because I do play games on my phone and I really appreciate the sharper and better display. I hope this video made your purchase decision more straightforward and I hope that if you're here just to learn that you got your time's worth out of it. That's all for today my friends, I'll see you soon.